Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, like, the way I prefer. I mean, besides standstill shooting, obviously. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was just talking to one of my buddies from Iowa. They were saying, like, that was on the scouting report, obviously. But I think just being able to, like, uh, kind of stand still and throw throw guys off a little bit and then come flying off, it uh, can usually get open off that way. So, yeah, I like shooting that way. Coach is saying that um, – that he might have to text you tonight and ask you not to go in the gym because if you if you, he doesn't do that you're gonna go in yeah. tomorrow at night yeah, yeah. because that's the kind of person you are. Do you think you're gonna listen to him this time? Uh, I mean he's been he's been on me a little bit so I've been having to take some days off just because it's been a long season obviously. I mean we've been going since like June, ten four hour practices in Spain. So I mean it's been a long season for sure. But yeah, I've had I've had to take some uh, take some advice from him and take a few days off here or you know. So I'm, I'll probably take to, take tomorrow off for sure. Yeah. Dave, on a fourth triple double for you, I read, I read on Twitter that in the Pac-12 it's you who's done that in a season and Jason Kidd. How do you how do you kind of feel being in that in the same conversation as as a legend like that? Um, it's a super blessing, especially the stuff I had to go through to um, even be here. Um, I thank my teammates for allowing me to get those assists, rebounds, or whatever it is. Uh, playing hard for each other. Um, I'm just super blessed. Don't really have words. Just playing hard and just all coming together. It seemed like you knew that you were right there with the tenth rebound, and you like took it from one of your teammates. It looked like it was from Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> just what was that? If you can tell us, like what was that kind of moment like? Like did you did you see him coming from from the back or what? I would I would like to take credit, but I honestly had no idea. <laughs> Look, so we were, it was a free throw, and I was like. I told everybody, look, I said, let me get a rebound. I said, y'all box out, I'm going to go get the rebound. That next possession, it just came off super funny, but it was a 50-50 ball. I got it. <laughs> um, I asked your coach about this, but I feel like you guys played with just so much confidence. Like, And that was a Big Ten team. And sometimes I've seen you guys play with less confidence against a team in your com- in your conference. So what what is it right now that, that you guys <coughs> walked out there today and just like carried yourselves like you did? Yeah, I mean, now it's like we're kind of in this thing, and you know, I think it feels more, like, attainable, like, oh, we could go win this tournament. So I think just some guys who want to go out on a good note, and I think we're just getting a good groove going. And, uh, you know, being able to play three games at home now is is pretty cool, so I'll never turn down another game at the Huntsman. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with Gabe. Um, some of these guys, their last game, BC, um, I'm not sure who else, but we got a lot of seniors, and um, I think everybody's just leaving it all out on the floor, uh, just knowing uh, if we lose, our season's over. Um, I think Cole made the comment um, after we lost the Pac-12 tournament that he was so bored and didn't know what to do because we were waiting on if we were playing the NIT or not. But I think guys are just super focused and um, just enjoying the time we have left with each other. Gabe, you mentioned that um – it's kind of now starting to feel attainable that you guys can win this tournament. Um, does that mean that at some point earlier it didn't feel attainable? No, I mean, I think it was just uh, like I, I said last week or last game, like uh, I think right when the season ended, I think it was kind of like, oh, man, this is not what we our goal was, obviously, never to play in the NIT. You want to make Wars Madness. So I think <clears throat> just once everybody kind of got their head wrapped around, like, okay, here we go, we're going to play in the NIT. And uh, realize like, hey, it's a pretty good tournament this year. Like, we play good teams, we play Iowa. Um, yeah, there's good teams in it. So, uh, I think once everybody kind of settled in, we're like, had a common goal of like, hey, let's go win this thing. Um, then it's like, all right, we start getting rolling. And yeah, like now it just feels like, hey, we got three games left and we're in champions. So, coach said um, after UC Irvine that like. He kind of wanted to see some more consistency, being able to hold leads against them. You had a 13-point lead, and they tied it. Here you guys had a double-digit lead. They, they cut it to six, and you guys were able to kind of go on from there. How did both of you kind of feel about the consistency and holding the lead tonight? Um, just defending the home court. Uh, we've had a lot of games where we've been up double digits and cut it close by winning. Um, I think we just wanted to take care of the ball and be extra careful and extend our lead, of course. Um, I think just being sound on offense um, at the end and just stepping up, making free throws and stuff like that to extend our, our lead and our win. Um, I think we're just super comfortable now and taking that uh, last stretch uh, series. Did a lot of really good things tonight. You know, I have so much respect for uh, Fran McCaffrey. He's been there for 14 years and 
Um, they've won, you know, however many times, 20 games, I think four of the last five years. And, um, and they're a high-octane offense. And, um, you know, I have a long – not a long history, but I was an assistant at Nebraska for two years and head coach of South Dakota. We played them in the NIT. So just have seen these guys play a lot. And as soon as we saw that draw, I was like, oh, boy, these guys put a lot of pressure on you on that end of the floor. And you just – when you get a lead, you just don't feel like it's ever safe. Because they can just – their spurt ability is just like that. You just got to be able to take care of the ball. And, and you know, I thought our guys were really locked in. It was so such a different feel for this game than it was the last game, meaning, you know, we had basically 48 hours to prepare for UC Irvine. And it's just you're drinking through a fire. Like, it's just – you don't have much time to think and you got to go. Then we have a day off and then three real practices. So it felt like Pac-12 play where you play on Saturday, off Sunday, three practices, play Thursday. So there was some more routine. I'm really proud of how we prepared. We had a great week of practice. I said it on the pregame um, show with Bill. And I thought our scout team, our, the, the way they play with their motion offense and their fluidity, and they don't call a lot of sets, which makes it, in some respects, very, very difficult. And in some respects, it's easier, too. So because they don't run a lot of sets, they run, it's just their motion is so random and it's hard to emulate in practice. And I thought our scout team was unbelievable in giving us a really, really good look because we don't see that style of play very often in the Pac-12. They're setting flare screens, down screens, staggers, uh, cross screens, like any kind of screening action. In for the most part in the Pac-12, it's a lot of ball screens and dribble drive. And certainly they set ball screens and they have some dribble drive, but it's just a different prep. And so I thought our scout team was outstanding. I thought our coaches did a great job getting us prepared. They're elite in transition, top 10 in terms of um, uh, uh, their, their, um, uh, how quick they get shots up, uh, their efficiency, depending on what you look at, number 16 to 22 in the country. So the way we guard it, I'm super, super proud of what we were able to do. You know, they're all the, the, the Sanford kid. He has been on fire coming into this game. He had 30 the other night against K-State, 7 for 11 from the three. Over his last five, he's averaged 24.2 points a game. And for us to be able to hold him, he's such a good player, to hold him for one for 11 um, for five points, our guys were really on point. And that was primarily, primarily Cole Bajima. Uh, but it's a team thing that way, and he did a great job. Uh, they hurt us inside. You know, they got some good players, obviously. Uh, where they really hurt us was transition, though. That was a huge key to this game, and I thought they got loose. And once we were able to get them to half court, we did a good job. And then at the offensive end, you know, we were super connected. Last game out, 23 assists. Tonight, 22 assists. And I just think that says something about our team and our fight and our mindset. To be able to stay connected in a play like that, um, says something. And so I thought we were really res uh, selfless and made the extra pass, really looking to share the ball, uh, and it led to a lot of good shots. So Gabe gets a career high with 31. Obviously, he was on fire there for a stretch. Maybe got a little overzealous there for a stretch, uh, but he was he was so good. Davon, I, did, I never look at stats during the game. I, I never do. So when, when Davon kind of went and I think he grabbed that last rebound over Gabe, I was like, well, he went with that. So that was some authority, and obviously the crowd went ballistic. Uh, I was like, oh, he must have got a, another one. So for him to be able to get another triple-double in the fourth of the season, I mean, that's incredibly hard to do. Uh, but I just thought we had a lot of good production all the way around. I thought Lawson, Lovering, and specifically the second half, a little bit of a slow start, but I thought he was really good in the second half. Uh, gets four offensive rebounds. Um, um, and, and just his ability to box out when they were hurting us some in the first half on the glass. He was owning that thing. Gets 10 for the game and did a really good job against their zone, creating some easy shots when we were a little bit kind of stuck in the mud for a little stretch there. So, uh, And then Hunter Erickson's played well again. Um, you know, seven points, doesn't, but he's just, he's just been so solid in um, so many ways. And then last thing, I know it's a long run on sentence, but congrats to Brandon Carlson cracking the top five. Uh, an all-time scoring in the history of the University of Utah men's basketball. I mean, that's <laughs> – I mean, seriously, like that – I mean, it's hard, hard to do. So, he gets another game to play. And he gets another game to play, and our team gets another game to play at home and um, against a very good VCU team. Any questions?
Coach, um, last game you talked about wanting a little bit more consistency considering you gave up a 13-point lead somewhere. I mm-hmm. believe it was the first half. Today you guys had a double-digit lead. They got it to six in the second half, and you guys were able to kind of correct some things and, and go on from there. What did you like and dislike about that consistency, consistency that you wanted more of today? I thought we were better today. You know, I think maybe the practice and a little more prep time helped us. I thought they really hurt us in – well – in stretches, when they when they made that run, um, we weren't scoring, and they were getting us in transition. And even when we were scoring in the second half, I thought they were getting us in transition. That's how they were getting us. When we got them in the half court, we did a pretty good job. Um, and and I just haven't seen VCU play. Uh, I've coached a couple of those guys uh, at Utah State. One of my sons is you know best friends with Coach Odom's son, so I've heard a lot about him, uh, and I've just seen him in snippets, but. Um, I just thought that we, we really um, – one of the biggest keys I thought tonight was just, like, take what the defense gives you. Don't really – you know, it, but that's the key any night, right? But that was a real, real focus for us. Um, so I thought we rebounded a lot better. Uh, I thought we took good shots. Their zone got us a little bit standing around, which is that's why they went zone. But then then we really started cooking against it. We've always – we've been a great zone team all year, uh, with the exception of maybe one game. And so, um, um, but we were able to get in attack mode, you know, that way and just playing through the pass and got to the foul line tonight, 19 for 25. Obviously, a few of those were late uh, in the game. We were able to make those. I mean, there's probably not much more to say about Gabe Matson at this point, but um, do you like when he's coming off full speed off the handoffs and, and shooting threes, kind of like floating to either side? I mean, for, it seems like for a lot of guys, that's not a good shot, but he makes those routinely. Yeah, I mean, I think a little bit. So first of all, um, you know, when we got hired here, Gabe was the first guy to commit to us and um, watched him a lot in high school and AU uh, and had recruited him um, prior and obviously went to Cincinnati and just wasn't, you know, wasn't the right fit. So I've always loved how he plays. Uh, got great feel for the game. Obviously, he can get it going quickly and – he can get separation. He's got quick twitch, and he's playing through, through some things right now. And um, so um, do I always like it? Not necessarily. Um, and we've talked about that at the same time. You know, he, he knows his game really, really well, and we have confidence in him that he can get it going. And certainly when he sees that ball go in the hole, I think everybody on the team, you know, trusts him to make those shots. And so, you know, late in the game, obviously, he was really kind of – and it was just like, slow down, you know, we'll be fine. Um, but you love guys. He loves the game. That guy, I'm not, the guy works hard. Like, I call it work, but he has an amazing passion for basketball. He is an ama- he's in the gym. I have to tell him not to work. Like, like, I'll text him tonight, no, you can't go in the gym tomorrow. Because otherwise he'd be in there at 9 a.m. You know, that's just, that's his routine. And he's diligent with it. He's obsessed with it. And I think you can see his progression from year one to year two and year two to year three, I think it's very easy to see. So our guys have full confidence in him, and um, he's a very good player. Your two big men, Lawson Lovering and, and Kevin Kata, up and down tonight, um, but yeah. they seem to to make plays that also impacted kind of the momentum of the game. What does that do for the team when, when you've got those big guys protecting the rim or getting to the rim? Yeah, we need that out of those guys. You know, we're playing a little bit different than we have, and and I think you phrased it exactly right. They both had some tough moments out there, and they made some huge plays out there at the same time, Uh, both of them uh, individually. I thought Caba more so in the first half, Lawson more in the second half. And so they're such different players. Um, And so kind of, you know, it just kind of depends on any given night. We just kind of got to kind of feel out who's playing maybe the best or who we're going against. Um, and so, you know, I thought Kaba really did some big time things. You see him running the floor. Oh my gosh. It's just like, and, uh, and then Lawson, um, I just thought he was really good the second half. And he, he, he was kind of hanging his head a little bit in that first half. And the ability to self-correct is an amazing talent. And I'm proud of both those guys with our whole team to be able to self-correct tonight, but specifically those two guys because they did have an impact on the game. That first half, their freshman, who's a very good player, I think he was the freshman of the week in the Big Ten like nine times. It was, it's a high number. And um, he was kind of owning up. I mean, he had 11 at the half and just kind of 
going right at us, and, and, and the guys took the challenge at halftime. I feel like your team was playing with just a lot of confidence mm -hmm. out there. Like, I could just feel it, because I've mm -hmm. watched your team also play with not a lot of confidence. Yeah. And, and, and have you been seeing that, like, in your practices? Are they, are they showing up like that? Um, they were playing a Big Ten opponent. But yeah. I feel like their confidence was more tonight than, like, maybe even against a Pac-12 opponent. Yeah, I think that I think there's some. Um, I just felt like this week of practice uh, was really, really good, and I think you get confidence when you do practice well. Um, you know, obviously it's been a little bit of a. You know, we, we, when we beat Stanford and Cal, thought we were, we played really, really well, and you know, uh, the Oregon State game wasn't great. I, Oregon were up eight when when BC got hurt. I mean, we we were seven or eight, whatever it was, with you know, 17 minutes ago or whatever. Uh, you saw what Oregon just did, right? And that was on the road. So, like, I, I feel like, you know, we've kind of been having a little more consistency in our lineup. Hunter Erickson's been playing a lot better. It's really helped us uh, in, a, in a big way. Um, obviously, BC was playing at a really high level before the injury, but he still has been playing well, very well. So, I don't know. I feel like maybe we're getting a little bit of a, a rhythm together if that makes sense. And so it's never too late. And and it's just, it's never too late until you're done. So I'm proud of our guys to be able to stick with it and keep pushing, because it, it can be hard to do. On that same kind of, it's never too late kind of tone, Brandon Carlson seemingly adding to his post-game repertoire with a little post-fadeaway jump shot to his right shoulder that we yeah. haven't seen much of before. What does that say about him, just his willingness to continue back to his game even at this stage? Yeah, I mean, that guy, he's, I mean, he gets in there, he works hard at it, he's a quick learner, amazingly talented, uh, unbelievable touch, right? Like, that, like not a lot of guys can, but he's got an amazing touch with his jump hook. Uh, he's got that little, where he's, he, he worked on that this summer. Well, he had it some last year too, but we can be a little stubborn, like, hey, let's get something to the rim and get fouled. But, um, um, I mean, we've talked so much about him, but he's just going to continue to climb because he puts time in the gym. Right, and that's the bottom line. And uh, when your talent meets hard work, it's amazing what can happen. You coached Sean first a little bit. Two years. Yeah. Did a home visit in Brisbane, Australia, with his family. Amazing Sam and his mom made. His mom's a coach. I was never a fan of salmon ever until that time. You know, you're doing a home visit, and she brought it out, and the whole family was there. And I was like, here we go. <laughs> like, like, you got to figure it out. It was incredible. And ever since then, I've loved salmon. So uh, uh, amazing family, great kid, um, a big part of two of our teams that um, coached him for two years, right? Recruited him for a full year my first year there. Um, was on our – was a freshman and had a big part of us um, um, winning that conference tournament championship. Um, smart player, super committed, great kid, great family. And, and Max Shuga. Uh, and so Max, um, we recruited Max, and he played uh, uh, as a freshman during the COVID year. Um, and so, um, so, yeah, and he's super talented. Both those guys are really, really talented guys and very good players, great people. What do you anticipate it being like seeing them again, playing against them? Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm really proud of those guys. They've had a great careers, both those guys. They've won a ton of games, and we saw that in when we recruited. They love to win. They love to compete. They're very good. Um, uh, you know, Ryan Odom, obviously, you know, coached at Utah State for two years. Great coach, really good person. Um, and and my son, one of my sons, Brady, um, my second boy, is super close with Owen. Owen. His son has stayed at my house many times. Brady has stayed at their house a ton of times. Um, Ryan's been so Ryan and his family have been so good to Brady. Uh, my oldest boy Landon, uh, graduate student teaching at Utah State right now, so he's he knows those guys. So it's it's really unique, quite frankly, but super cool and, and really proud of those guys and what they've been able to do. They've they both had great college careers, and Sean will be done. This is his fifth year, and Max will have an opportunity to come back for his fifth year if he chooses to do so. So um, great people.